YouTube, it's Mark here. Just want to bring uh, a short video to you this evening about why other Christians don't want us to be right about the King James Bible issue. And it is an issue and it's important. And I think um, the, the hallmark of why they don't want us to be right about this is pride, ultimately. That's what I believe it is. And I'd like to read... Um, uh, a verse of scripture from an otherwise unread book of the Bible, very rarely quoted or read, I rarely see this anywhere, Obadiah chapter 1 verse 3, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And I just felt led to using that particular verse, and again, you rarely hear anybody talking about Obadiah. And there's some real real treasure in that. And I wanted to use that um, with reference to what I want to talk about this evening. About why other Christians don't want us to be right. And it is a matter of pride. Because ultimately, and I'll use the word if. If we're right, from their perspective. If we're right, then they're wrong. That's the logical conclusion of that statement they would have to admit that they're wrong and there are a lot of fallouts from taking that position now I'm fortunate that I um, read a couple of bible versions before I took this stance uh, I read the contemporary English version when I got saved and I read the NIV afterwards um, so I, I mean I wasn't <laughs> pastoring a church or doing ministry work or missionary work I wasn't really doing much for God at all um, other than just some personal witness so that wasn't really a problem for me at that point in time but with my future aspirations um, in ministry and missionary work uh, it will become a problem but luckily now I'm in the right camp and it, and it won't be a problem thank God however there are plenty of people out there with varying different positions there are probably pastors and ministers who would uh, face this kind of question that have wasted a lot of time and a lot of money on versions other than the King James Bible. And that's the problem. Often these people, and this includes just standard uh, you know, members of a congregation, they've spent 30 40 $50 or whatever on a Bible, something similar on a study Bible, um, and other materials surrounding that. In the case of pastors and ministers, they've often spent thousands and thousands of dollars or pounds um, going to ministerial courses. I myself even applied uh, for a very short course um, at Spurgeon's College. Um, and I'm glad, actually, that the Lord revealed that wasn't what I was supposed to be doing because, again, they were using a different version and it wasn't right for me. And the Lord thankfully took me away from that. But there are people that will spend thousands and thousands of dollars of pounds um, on these courses and scripture. And they've had to learn a lot of scripture and doctrine from these other versions. So even when you bring to them, you know, powerful truths and issues and contradictions and problems uh, with these other versions, it's going to be extremely difficult for, for them to just simply admit that they're wrong and fix that problem. And yet it can be done. There's a, a chap on YouTube here, Brian Denliger. I think he said that he spent 10 years with the NIV. And he's managed to ditch that and relearn scripture. I'm sure sometimes it's still difficult for him. But not everybody needs to get into this position where you spend so long on scripture that it becomes embedded. It's like learning anything in life. You, you embed it and then someone says, hey, you've not, you're not doing that right. You've got to unlearn it all. And relearn the right way to do it. And the problem with these new versions, excuse me, is that doctrine, certainly key doctrine on the deity of Jesus Christ and other things, has been affected and changed. Very key verses have been changed and affected. And you're going to have to relearn it all. So there's many things to do, unfortunately, off the back of this. And that's part of the problem. There's a pride in, in ultimately just saying, I was wrong. We have a final authority. We have a preserved word of God in English. We have it. And I was wrong. And that's what, that's the problem. 
and it's a, it's a, a pride of their heart that has deceived them. And who will bring them down to the ground? Well, the truth will bring them down to the ground. But they don't want that. They don't want that. They don't want to be exposed for being wrong. And this is the problem. So um, it's, it's an exhortation to other King James Bible believers that we're not to expose them personally as being wrong. But that we are supposed to bring them the truth. And for someone to reach their own conclusions based upon what we're presenting... And there's also other parts of this that are a problem because, and again, using the word if, if we're right from their perspective, it's going to bring some pretty significant change. Now, if you're just a member of a congregation like I was, the change is simple. It means leaving that church and you don't have to. But if you take this issue seriously and you're just listening to, to quote unquote preaching from the NIV every Sunday, it is going to come a point where you're you just can't keep going back. So if you're a member of a congregation or a casual visitor to a church, you're unlikely to return again. And that can bother some people because you could have friends there. You can be comfortable with that routine in your life. And that can be difficult. It wasn't particularly easy for me, but I've done it. And I've done it for the right reasons, because I need to be fed, fed the word of God, the true word of God, not some half truth. So again, depending on your conviction and what happens, that will be something you have to do. And that would be extremely difficult for a minister or a pastor or an elder or a deacon in a church to come out, so to speak, and say that you're taking a stand for the King James Bible and a, and a strong stand for the truth. Because then it brings you into conflict with uh, the other people that are in that church, whether they're the rest of the congregation or your fellow deacons or the pastor, if you're a position in a position of relative authority there. You know, especially if you're an elder, you're going to find that you're going to come to blows doctrinally and you're going to be usurping the authority of the pastor of that church. Which I don't believe there's anything wrong with doing. If you have the truth, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But it will bring some conflict. And obviously, the higher up you are in within that building, um, if you're a pastor or a minister, that's going to create huge problems. If most of your congregation have heard you preaching from the NIV for you know three four five ten years or whatever it is and then suddenly you you're, you're going to get up and say you know i've reviewed the issue i'm wrong on this and uh, i guess if you're modest and humble and honest and you care and you can you may be able to do it you may be able to convert that around and fix it and i i i hope that 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 can happen but the likelihood is that the pride of making a stance for that, of investing all that money and time into learning scripture and taking courses and everything you've done around the NIV or whatever version you're reading other than the King James, it's almost too much to change. Too much to change. Now, I'm not saying if you preach from it, you're, you know, you're not going to lead someone to salvation or, you know, you're preaching falsehood. But there's some, there are some doctrinal problems with preaching from the NIV. Uh, I... I recorded a video some time ago about James 5.16, about confessing your salt, uh, faults versus confessing your sins. That was actually the last sermon I heard in this NIV preaching Baptist church. And I had to leave because it just doesn't correspond. It's such a big difference. It doesn't correspond. So if you do continue to preach from the NIV or another version, you're just going to have to tiptoe around and be very careful. Be very careful. So that's one of the problems. So again, you're going to have to uh, be forced into a change. You know, you're going to have to change your routine. You're going to have to create conflict and problems. And this is this is the issue. So, you know, my exhortation in this video is that if you're a newly saved Christian, that you should really focus on the King James Bible. Don't go down this other road. Um, and I made this mistake, and I'm thankful that I've been saved for nearly four years now. Um, and I learned relatively quickly about this issue. Relatively, I posted a a video describing my journey and I've mentioned here that I read the CEV and then the NIV after that and I'm thankful that I never really learned any scripture. My walk with God when I got saved was a very moderate walk because I used to be an atheist so for a year plus I was a secret Christian. So reading the Bible, getting a good grasp of things. This is what I mean, you will, you know, you will get an idea of things within the Bible, you know, if you're in the contemporary English or the NIV, you'll still read the story and you'll you'll get it. But a serious student 
rightly dividing the word of truth will have major problems with the NIV. So it depends on, on your own personal circumstances. I think within the first one or two years, you can probably just about get away with it. I mean, I don't speak for every Christian and their experience after getting saved. But there will come a point where you will step up, like I have in the last probably five to six months in particular, um, where you'll feel that conviction and that challenge. And if you're armed with anything but a King James Bible, you will be crippled by this. And it will cause you immense difficulty. And the longer that you entrench that mentality um, about reading from the NIV and, and paying money to, to go to courses or seminars or whatever it is you're doing, um, it's going to make it nearly impossible for you to get out of that. I know for a fact that the preacher or pastor at the church that I used to go to, there's no way he's going to change. No way. I could tell him till I'm blue in the face about the, the Bible version issue. And there's, I know he won't change. I know he won't. It's just he won't do it. And I think it's ultimately a pride. Because you can present this issue to people and they won't go and check it out. Because what if you're right? What if you're right? So they don't want to know about it as well. You know, they tolerate it as just another reading. But they're not really, even even pastors and ministers who've been preaching for 10, 20, 30 years. Um, I don't believe that they investigate all of these issues. Because if they did, they would be convicted. So I don't profess to be a scholar or, or particularly a quote-unquote man of God. But I do study and read my Bible. And I do study and read about this issue. And when I became aware of it... And the claims that King James Bible readers were, were saying, when I became aware of that, I, I checked it out. Because I'm not going to ignore something making such uh, radical claims, actually. And then when I did my research and, um, and saw with my own eyes what was going on, there was nothing I could do but change. And I think this is why you won't get people really... Um, you know, who read the NIV or whatever, really watching, say, for example, my videos or researching the issue or whatever they're doing, they don't really want to do it because they're frightened, really. They're proud, even though they won't admit it. They have, they have a pride over this issue, but they're scared as to what it might mean afterwards. And you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. For me, I was far more concerned with having the, the word of God in my hand, the true preserved word of God in my hand. And if that means I have to leave the church that I've been a member of for a year, so it's no big deal for me. I would rather have the truth than sacrifice it for uh, the routine of what I was doing on a Sunday and, and all the other rubbish that was going on. No oh, thanks. I want to know truth. I want to get convicted. I want to learn doctrine and, and have it right first time every time. And I don't want to be reading and just guessing what's going on. So, you know, that's that's really just what I wanted to bring to you this evening. You know, that they don't want us to be right about the King James Bible, yet we are. And they don't want to go and check it out. Because deep down they know we're right. They know we're right. And I, I can just present video after video after video. And I've got plenty to do. I'm going to try and do three or four more. Uh, maybe later or tomorrow. Um, but I could just keep going on for for just weeks and months without any problem at all I've got plenty to do here you know but this is just um an exhortation that you know especially if you're newly saved don't you know jump ahead and think oh I don't want to read the King James it's too hard it's too difficult it's not it's not just persevere read through it get real truth get convicted don't start weak with an NIV or a new living or a, certainly nothing like the message or whatever just don't start with anything else because they're going to cripple you it's not nothing to do with your salvation it's about you being uh, powerful for god and if you use any other version you're just not going to be that and i've seen it i've seen it with my own eyes you're just not going to have authority there's a reason it's called the authorized version it's because it has authority it's an authority and i've never been more convicted or more strong in faith since reading my King James Bible. Before that, nothing really I could witness about my own personal testimony, but I had no power, no knowledge. So, okay guys, just wanted to bring that and share that with you and uh, hope to hear from you. Thanks very much. God bless.